Hey everyone, the target of this video is to provide an introduction to Marvel Heroes Omega by giving an overview of the systems in the game for any new players who may feel overwhelmed or who are not sure where to start or what game modes they may want to play. Okay, so let's get started. The very first thing you're going to want to know about is this big blue thing called the waypoint. When you click on the waypoint, it takes you to either story mode, terminals, or challenges. We'll talk about terminals and challenges a bit later because that's more about endgame. But to start you off, the first thing I'd recommend you do is go to the prologue, which is essentially chapter 0 of a 10 chapter story, and progress your way through. It'll help you learn the mechanics of your hero and level up. Now, down here, there's different difficulties you can choose. I'd recommend starting on normal difficulty, but as you unlock more heroes, you might be able to start right off on heroic difficulty because you know what items to pick up, and you'll have more infinity points, which we will talk about later. Now, under story mode, you can also go to the hubs, such as Avengers Tower, Xavier School, Odin's Palace, Hammer Bay. These are all places you're going to unlock as you complete story mode. But, again, you only really have to know about for endgame, such as Odin's Palace. You might be able to spend raid tokens or specific points you won't be able to spend here in Avengers Tower. Okay, so now once you've completed some story mode and you're past level 20, that means you've unlocked terminals, so let's move on to some endgame. Okay, now let's try a terminal. We're going to do something, for example, Kingpin's Warehouse, where you fight Doc Ock, select your difficulty, warp to location. Now the way these terminals typically work is you don't have a quest or a series of things to complete, but you will see over here it says defeat hostiles 3 out of 100. I recommend completing this every time, because what happens is you get an extra reward chest when you defeat the boss at the end, and there is a pretty good chance of you getting a unique artifact relative to if you just defeated the boss. Because dashing is limited, you still have your travel power, so you could skip to the boss if you want, but I find it more fun. And it really doesn't take that much time, at this point it's probably been less than a minute, and I've got just over half the enemies needed to get that extra reward chest. So they have a lot of different terminals. I picked one of the first ones that came out, but they did come out with something like the Daily Bugle, came out for the Spider-Man Homecoming release movie. We're going to be getting an X-Men Apocalypse terminal pretty soon. So these terminals are pretty good practice just to get used to what kind of attack you want to do for what type of mob. For example, these guys are really weak, I could just use a massive mob wiping attack, but for these guys, they're almost like a mini boss. A little bit weaker, but still strong enough that you're going to have to think about how you want to tackle them. So I've got 90. When you've got 90 out of 100, it would be a pretty good time to rush to the boss, but I'm right here anyways. So I'll just take out these two guys, and then we're going to fight the boss. So, here we are, Doc Ock. So now you have to defeat the boss using whatever means you can. And at the end of defeating the boss, you have a small chance to get an artifact or a unique specific to this villain. Chances are you won't get one for a while, but just keep playing whatever you find fun and all the items will come along. So there's all those drops. This is the chest I was talking about that you get for defeating those 100 extra characters. So when I open that, you get a whole extra set of extra items. Okay, so now might be a good time to talk about powers and traits. Now the way the game has been set up, each hero has a different playstyle that you can set up. For example, Juggernaut has basically two sets where he has a movement set of attacks and a stationary mystical powerhouse set of attacks. So based on how you prefer to play the hero, you can choose what powers you want to slot down here. Now talents and traits, if you look at the top left, it'll say damage, 4% of durability or strength. That durability or strength depends on who you're playing. So for another hero, it might be strength and speed, it might be intelligence and energy. But if you hit C, you'll look over here, there's durability, strength, fighting, speed, energy, intelligence. For Juggernaut, as it shows here, you want to focus on durability and strength. Now what you have down here is traits. So for your first level here, you can select one of these three. 
and it goes as you level up. It continues to unlock new slots where you can pick one of three options. Now for someone like Juggernaut, a lot of his power comes from how much momentum you have. So you can decide for a big elbow drop, you get an extra 6% damage or 4% damage per 10 momentum spent based on what you pick in here. You might decide to choose a different buff. You also might choose to regenerate 20% of your momentum per second automatically, but then you can't regenerate momentum on your own. Whereas the way I have it slotted, I don't get that 20% free momentum every second, but I have skills that generate momentum for me as I use them. Now, for someone like Rocket, for example, you could choose this trait, which means when you summon Groot, he gets a lot of extra defense, health, damage, and so on. So when you go into a combat zone, you'll see Groot fight alongside you. Now another thing you could do instead, is you could change this buff for Groot, and completely change the power into something called Warpath. Now what that does, is instead of summoning Groot, it puts you on top of Groot, for a short amount of time, as a whole new attack. Okay, so now let's talk about the Infinity System. The way this works is you have six Infinity Gems, each of which has a slot of its own options you can add your points into. These infinity points are earned just through playing the game. So whether you're leveling up or if you're max level, this is basically experience that just keeps going and keeps adding new points as you hit your target. So for someone like Juggernaut, I went into the Mind Gem, the first thing I did was I maxed out this, which adds 500 momentum. Because his damage is heavily based on momentum. If you're playing another hero and let's say your spirit bar decreases, halfway through fighting, then you're going to want to add points into that as well. You can also add points into something like speed, or durability, or strength. Whatever you find will give you a boost. If you hit C, go to your character sheet, you'll see something like durability adds defense rating and health, or fighting adds critical rating multiplier, or you could just go into points like this that add defense rating, deflect chance, base health, so that's up to you. These points, like plus one durability, plus one speed, they cost a lot of infinity points, so you might want to save those for later. So if your hero is a little squishy, if you find he keeps dying too easily, add defense, dodge rating, base health. You can also add points into attack speed and movement speed. There's a lot of options based on how you want to play your hero. If you go back to talents and traits, Juggernaut has an option where I can make his signature basically never expire. I could use it as long as I want to. In that case, I might choose to make a signature power much more powerful. So one more thing you might want to keep in mind is as you gain experience points in the infinity system, that experience is spread out equally throughout all your heroes. So if you make a new hero and you have 600 infinity points to spend, all your heroes also have 600 points to spend. Hit T to access your hero roster. This is also where you'll find your team ups. If you hit X, you can find the store where you can buy heroes, team ups, and new costumes. The team ups are also customizable. They acquire gear, they level up, same as your hero. Okay, now let's try one shot. So, the difference between a one shot and a terminal is one shots are a little bit longer. They have a side story that starts at the beginning, relative to the one-shot. You also have a couple extra bosses you have to fight before you get to the main boss at the end. Now they're not quite as extensive as a raid, which in my eyes is a good thing. Okay, now let's take a look at legendary quests, which you get to by hitting L. These are basically the quickest, funnest way of leveling your hero after level 20. Now you'll see here it says defeat interlopers 0 out of 45, and below it says go to midtown. So go to your waypoint, under challenges you'll find midtown, which in my eyes is actually the funnest map for endgame. So what you're going to do here is you're going to run around and find what they call interlopers. So you'll defeat different kinds of mobs, and as you see that number go up from 0 up to 45, you'll start to learn who they define as an interloper. 
Now if you do want to check a lot easier where you're tracking at, go to your mission tracker on the side, click the dot, and activate legendary quests to show up. Now on the right side you can see how many interlopers I've taken out. So, once you do eventually hit that 45 interloper mark, you get a bunch of EXP as well as one or more Odin marks. These Odin marks are used to buy legendary items and also to enchant your artifacts later on in the game. You will also find two game modes very similar in Midtown called Industry City Patrol and Hightown Patrol. They're essentially different maps, slightly different event quests, and different bosses, but the same general idea. Finally, there are some endgame waves such as X-Defense and Hollow Sim that offer never-ending waves of tasks and enemies to defeat, and some other modes I'll let you check out for yourself.